Hello, everyone. John Flynn here from Flynn Real Estate, serving Southern Ontario, based out of the Niagara region, here once again on Tuesday to give you my honest and professional opinion regarding the 2022 Canadian housing market. So the big question on the based off of the big news is, are we going to have enough homes for all these new immigrants, 500,000 a year that are coming? So, of course, I looked at the statistics, I looked at the data, and this is what I found. So we're going to start with some basic facts. All the data is taken from Stats Canada, so the population data and the housing data, the housing starts and housing completions and whatnot. First off, let's look at the Canadian population. It is now approaching 39 million. It was 34 and a half million back in 2012. I went back to 2012 as a baseline to start because, of course, home prices weren't really accelerating through the roof, you know, prior to that and even on, in 2012. So I figured that's a good time to go back and, and there's plenty of data in this range too. Also, the national growth without immigration, uh, as most people know, they'd say like we'd have zero population growth without immigrants. Well, it's probably not true, but it is very minimal. It's about 10 to 15,000 people a year we add to the population just based off our own natural or national growth, whatever you want to call it. And uh, of course, they're not going to take up that much housing, 10 to 15,000 people, probably less than 5,000 homes. So we're just going to exclude that from the data for now, just to keep things simple. Here's a recent article from the Globe and Mail talking about the increased immigration targets. Ottawa's annual immigration plan aims to add 465,000 permanent residents in 2023, 485,000 in 2024, and 500,000 in 2025. About 60% of admissions will be in the economic class, which means they're educated, fill targeted labor and skill shortages, contribute to innovation, and can integrate into the Canadian labor market with ease, the federal government stated. So it's interesting. So 60% are in the economic class. I don't know if that's 60% of families or 60% of people, but regardless. So outside of that 60%, the remaining 40% would be spouses, partners, and children, parents and grandparents refugees and, and asylum seekers. And that's how they're made up, obviously. So yeah, now let's look at that data in the chart, the same chart. I've just added some numbers in just to refresh 2019, 341,000 immigrants, 2020, 184,000, 2021, 405, 2022, 470. And there is the predictions for 2023 to 25. I've broken it out with the economic class. I'm not going to include this in the data uh, going forward, I just wanted to point it out that if it's 60%, those are the numbers per year that actually are in that economic class and potentially home buyers. So now let's move on to the housing data and see what that looks like. We have the Canada housing starts, the quarterly figures. And so these numbers, 39,000 on the left, up to 62,000, those are the quarterly figures per year. And so I just picked some years that were kind of representative of the lead up to today. I think actually 2019 was more of an average there, you'll see it. And 2012 was reasonably high. So I chose that just not to exclude it because it is a higher one. And we're going to use that in the data going forward. Also, housing starts have risen 24 to 30 percent since 2019, depending on the quarter. They have risen 18 to 21 percent since 2012. Again, depending on the quarter you're looking at, but I have the highs and lows there. The population has gone up 12 percent from Q3. 2012 to Q3 2022. And I'd also like to make an argument that we didn't have a supply issue when it came to housing in 2012, 2013, and 2014, and many years prior and after that too. Okay, now moving on to the completions, the housing completions. Uh, I guess you could argue this is the number that really matters, how many homes are completed, right? So here we have 2012, we had just over 180,000 homes completed in Canada for the whole year. This is not quarterly. The points, the data points are quarterly, but the, the top there is for the yearly. The 2019, we had 187,000, 198 in 2020, 222 in 2021. And for this year, I'm estimating about 218,000 because uh, those are the first three quarters and we'll say 55,000, which is less than the summer months, but more than the winter months for housing completions. So just some extra stats on these numbers also. The housing completions increased 23.5% from 2012 to uh, 2021. I can't use 2022 because they're not finished yet. So 23.5%, we have increased housing completions since 2012. And from 2019 to 2021, we have increased the completions by 19%. So again, the population has risen 12% from 2012 
but our housing completions have risen 24%. So it's it's pretty uh, significant, almost double. And the last chart I want to take a quick look at is the Canada units under construction. So these are obviously under construction. They overlap each other over the quarters. But you can see our total number of homes at any given quarter under construction has significantly increased. It looks like it's pretty much double, just almost double. That last 335 was actually Q1 2022. So we're well above it. So it has doubled. And I want to put this side by side with the Canadian population graph just to see that same kind of trend line. So you can see here side by side, the population has been rising significantly, but so have the houses under construction. So it's a pretty interesting um, correlation there. Of course, I put all this data together to like make sense of it. Like, what does this mean? Where are we at? Are we going to have a housing shortfall? So here's the numbers. And this is based again off all the stats can data. Uh, so check out this chart here. So again, I've gone back for the past four years because this is kind of when our housing crisis or housing shortage has really been noticeable. So our new immigrants there and our projected new immigrants for 2023 to 2025 based off the Canadian numbers, which is 465, 485 and 500, you get 1.45 million. The annual housing completions, you can see how they have increased as per the charts I just showed and are estimated for 2022. Who knows from 2023 to 2025 how many we will have, but uh, I don't think it's going to be less than, you know, 2012, which was 180. But anyway, so of course, if you've watched any of my previous videos and this data is readily available, the average people per household is 2.4 in Canada. It was a lot higher back in, you know, every previous year almost, but it's 2.4 right now. So given that our annual housing completions where 187,000 in, say, 2019, the immigrants were 341. To house those immigrants at 2.4 people per house, we needed 142 homes, 142,000 homes, giving us a surplus of 45,000 from that year. 2020, same thing. Look at the immigration was very low, so we had a big surplus of homes. We, we completed 198,000 homes that year. We only needed 76,000 to house people at 2.4 people per house. So we had a surplus of 122,000. 2021, we had a surplus of 53,000, almost 54. And 2022, we're probably on target for another 20, 22,000 uh, surplus homes. So what are we going to need for these 1.45 million new immigrants that are coming to Canada from 2023 to 2025? And you can see units needed at 2.4 people per house. We need 604,000 units to house these new immigrants. So 604,000 units needed minus our 243,000 surplus just from the last four years alone. We're at a shortfall of 360,000 homes from 2023 to 2025. Well, let's go back and look at our housing completions uh, chart. So our lowest completions in decades or in a decade, I should say, was 180,000 per year. I could add up the other years, but it's going to be very similar. Maybe it's 170 or 160,000. Obviously, if you look at our recent data, we've increased closer to 200,000 per year. But regardless, we need a minimum of 120,000 new units per year to house the increase in population. It's very simple math, right? Uh, if you guys disagree, or if you can tell me I'm missing something here, but it's I've, I've presented all the data, and this goes back to that same argument, housing supply and demand, and where we have a, a shortfall of houses. I just don't think it holds merit. I didn't think it held it before, and I proved it with numbers. I'm doing it again now. Let me know if you guys have different data or if there's something that you think I'm missing. I did obviously leave some things out, but I'm going to touch on them shortly here. Just some things to consider. The average immigrant in 2019 came to Canada with an average savings of $47,000. Over half of that is used to get settled. And of course, the rest of that, some of them, 66% of them send money home. And of course, they use it to you know, save more, or save for a house, or whatever the, the case may be. All immigrants need a place to live, regardless if they're in the economic class or not. So that data, again, I didn't use, but uh, I just wanted to point that out. Most eligible immigrants can't even buy a house if they wanted for a year or two, just while they create their credit rating and, and whatnot. Usually it's three or four years before they buy them. Many actually don't end up buying a house ever. 
not included in this data for housing starts and completions, again, I've touched on it before, is all the basement apartments and accessory apartments that have been created by investors and, and whoever else. Talking about investors, investor purchasing has tanked of new homes and, and all homes, all even resale homes. So that demand is gone. So that was a huge demand from 2013, in my area at least, onwards. That is has dried up now. They're not making money. They're actually losing money if they're going to buy a new house now. So that pressure is off. And lastly, the baby boomers, they're literally in the middle of the retirement phase right now. So you're going to see a lot of estate sales and power of attorneys come on the market too. So a quick story about a builder in my area that built a community or they've still been building communities. It's a big builder. But back in 2013, they created this their first community in our neighborhood or in Niagara. And they had even had a town hall to see what kind of homes people want, what features they want, and, and whatever else. And builders didn't have to do this after this, but this was, you know, back, you know, 2013. They estimated on the first phase in the first week or so, in the first weekend into the launch, they had a target of selling 50 homes. They sold 180 homes that weekend and it like totally blew them away. Most of those homes then and most of the phases after that were investors. There's no more investors buying these homes because it's just too expensive to buy and rent. You can't break even. Prices are going. Investors, investors aren't buying when prices are going down. So again, it goes back to that investor market has, has dried up and that was what drove our supply issue. Investors were scooping them all up. There was none left for the end users, the the picky end users that wanted, you know, different colored rooms and, and different features. The investors didn't want anything. They just wanted an investment. They buy the house, here's a deposit, and they take their equity for their down payment, whatever. They had options. The the end using bu user buyers, they didn't have many options. So of course the builders focused on the investors. So anyway, we're gonna see a lot of supply come on the market. There's tons of building happening. The immigrants, you don't have to worry about them, you know, flooding the market with immigrants and buying all the homes and driving up prices. It clearly shows in the data it's not going to happen. But again, let me know your thoughts and comments below. Uh, like this video, share this video, and I will see you next week.